Welcome back, everyone. We will continue with our program and move on to panel two now. And this panel will be focusing on environmental and repurposing changes. So the panel will be moderated by Peter Voida, senior environmental expert at, from the Energy Community Secretariat. So Mr. Voida is an environmental expert and then his uh, geographical focus on um, Southeast Europe, in particular in the Western Balkans, as well as Moldova, Ukraine, and Georgia. Peter, I hope you can hear me. Yes, I'm here. Can you also hear me a little bit? Yes, perfect. Okay. So I remember, I just would like to remind um, speakers that they have um, a couple of minutes to, to for your presentation and then it would be nice to have some time for, for discussion. So please keep your uh, camera on for the discussion so that we can put you also on the screen to have um, to see all the, the panelists. So that would be perfect. And um, okay, we have 40 minutes now. And um, Peter, over to you. Thank you very much, uh, Elodie. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. And uh, thank you for this uh, opportunity to, to chair this, uh, this panel with the title Voices from the Coal Regions on Environmental Slash Repurposing Challenges. My name is Peter Voida. I work as Senior Environmental Expert at the Energy Community Secretariat. And it is my honor to introduce the distinguished speakers of the panel. Um, I apologize that uh, um, it is the, the only uh, male-only panel uh, for, uh, for this event, but this was due to certain last-minute rearrangements uh, on the agenda. Uh, the first uh, speaker on our panel is Mr. Mirza Pushlinovic, who is a country expert from Bosnia and Herzegovina. Uh, Mirza has a master's and a PhD uh, from the Faculty of Electrical Engineering from the University of Sarajevo. So Mirza is an electrical engineer who has a lot of experience uh, from, the, from the coal sector. He's also a friend of the energy community, so we also know each other for, uh, for a long time. But apart from his scientific and technical career, he also had um, very many other roles. He was, uh, between 2001 and 2005, the ambassador and the permanent representative of Bosnia and Herzegovina uh, in the United Nations mission in New York. And he also served uh, as member of several parliaments in Bosnia and Herzegovina uh, for eight years. Um, so, Mirza, without further ado, I would like to pass the floor to you. Peter, thank you very much, and uh, good afternoon uh, to all the participants, and uh, thank you for the organizers to inviting me to speak on this, uh, for me, very important event on even more important subject. Uh, since uh, the energy transition is something we have been talking about in the region for a while, and this is, uh, in my opinion, one of the most important aspects of the energy transition that we should, from the very beginning, tackle. So, uh, it's much easier to talk about uh, infrastructure, physical infrastructure and its possible utilization than to talk about social economic aspects of the transition, and even uh, psychological aspects of the transition that shouldn't be forgotten. Uh, there is a history in Bosnia and Herzegovina of repurposing uh, physical infrastructure of former coal mines former salt mines or other ore mines, open pit ones and underground. So the subject is not new to the society. Some of the projects were implemented in the social central plant environment before the 1990s, because even in that time, there were some underground and open pit mines that ran out of the coal. And some were implemented in the last 20 years in the market environment. So I will share with you some of the key findings I identified by preparing a presentation for today's uh, panel. Please, next slide. So, very diverse and multifunctional and physical infrastructure is connected to the coal mines. Uh, transportation corridors, electrical power corridors, uh, settlements, uh, quite high level of uh, qualification of the employees. And uh, 
experience with repurposing of the physical infrastructure of the former coal mines in Bosnia and Herzegovina indicate that it could be used for different purposes. The usual thing is transferring it or uh, recultivating the land for recreation areas, clean water lakes, sport and fishing zones, and some uh, areas for agricultural production. However, one of the most successful ones, in my opinion, was transformation of the facilities connected to one of the underground coal mines to the industrial incubators. Does it mean that the jobs for the former coal miners were created? I'm not sure that those jobs were replaced. However, be aware that the coal miners' families also a part of the labor market. So if you create for the local economy, jobs for daughters and sons and uh, family members of the coal miners, you also create uh, someone who is a bread, bread bearer in the, in the family. Of course, the main purpose was restructuring of the local economy and create creation of the employment for the former mines employees. Uh, experience showed that dedicated business units were established. However, they usually operated between the former coal mines. It was not such a dramatic coal phase out as it is today. And that indicates that uh, sustainability of those units were not always secured. Next slide, please. So what are the lessons learned? Sorry. Uh, we also have uh, actual plans. So we have uh, indication that some coal mine sites will be closed and uh, some uh, planning for the repurposing of infrastructure have already started. It's number one, very popular construction of solar photovoltaic parks, which has started in North Macedonia and is now spreading around the region. The new initiative is uh, using the land of the former coal mines for industrial biomass production. It's again, both of these two are connected to the energy sector. Or initiatives that support improving energy efficiency project in local communities that will create some sort of the local jobs for a part of the people who are employed in the mines. The challenge is that were faced during the implementation of projects. Some of them were successful, many were not successful. All of them were very complex from the social economic point of view. So the challenges was the challenges were how to use the existing technical skills in the closed coal mines in the energy sector or in the other sectors where those skills could be used. As I have already mentioned, was the economic sustainability of the created businesses or created new businesses. In the centrally planned economy, they were kept within the umbrella of the mother company, mining company. In a way, they were protected. Uh, in the new market economy, they have to operate as a separate business units. What is also uh, a challenge? Top-down approach is always, or was always used. You know, you expect state utilities to come up with the ideas, with the funds, with technical expertise. And that definitely might create or will create a problem in the future when we have such a wide area, uh, massive coal phase out process like the one we are facing. Next slide, please. So just for the discussion and for the further activities in the project, what are lessons learned or not learned? Well, this is a, this is restructuring. Uh, do not create high expectations of former my employees that not substantial changes will happen. I mean, they are used to work in a protective environment. So they are used to some special privileges. The new companies and the new jobs will not have that protective umbrella. So it is, it is a transition to something which is different, which is new. And that's why it is so complex. That's why 
trade unions, local communities, non-governmental organizations, and uh, local uh, educational institutions should be involved from the very beginning of developing repurposing ideas. Experience shows that where local communities were the leading actors in uh, repurposing projects, success was more likely to happen. Uh, and just I for the discussion. Is, I just minutes. Yes, uh, yeah, I would like I'm to finishing. ask you to I'm conclude. Finishing, yeah. I'm finishing. This is the last slide. Oh, now you, you move the slide. I don't see it. So what are the target industries? My suggestion is target the industries of the 21st century. So if it's agriculture production, target organic food production. If it's possible, target energy transition technologies and even ICT based businesses. We have some good experience with that. In law, involve local education institutions, and it's not all about the financial and technical support. I repeat what was said, local ownership from the very beginning is very, very important. So Peter, that's all for the beginning. Thank you very much, uh, Mirza. And before I pass the floor to Mr. Alexander Dukalov, who is our next uh, panelist, just a quick question to you that came from the floor, and I think it would be good to have it right now. Could you please name the mine that was uh, repurposed, that you referred to, and um, um, I mean, what was the type of the new industry uh, involved? Okay, I'll let just the two one that come from the region, Tuzla. Come to region where I come from. The first one is underground mine Lipnica, which was turned in the industrial incubator and currently employs more than 200 people, not necessarily former coal mines employees. Uh, the project started 20 years ago and it's been sustainable and it's in the sustainable operation so far. Uh, the second one is the experience of the former salt mine and also of one of the former coal mines where uh, the area, the resources, the infrastructure was turned into recreational purposes. The best example of uh, re re uh, restructuring, the best example of local economic development is transformation of the former salt mines in Tuzla in a very nice touristic attraction, which are the salt lakes in the city center. Thank you very much, uh, Mirza. And without further ado, I would like to pass the floor to Mr. Oleksandr Brikalov. Um, Mr. Brikalov is the mayor of Mirnokrad from uh, the Donetsk region, uh, Don Donetsk region in Ukraine. He is a mining engineer, so he has uh, a lot of professional experience related to coal and to mining. He held uh, different positions uh, in the industry, but then also in public administration. He also has a master's in public administration and uh, since uh, November 2015 he is uh, the mayor of the municipality of Pernohrad so please the floor is yours Доброго дня всім мене добре чути Пане модератор я дякую на за надане слово Мене звати Олександр Брикалов, я міський голова міста Мирноград, що розташовано в Донецькій області України. Я прошу включити наступний слайд. І хочу сказати, що сьогодні я представляю не тільки своє місто, місто Мирноград, але й платформу сталого розвитку вугільних міст Донецької області. У травні 2019 року шість монопрофільних міст, шахтарських міст регіону об'єдналися заради напрацювання спільного бачення власної справедливої трансформації. У нашій платформі також є три місцеві громадські організації та Торгово-промислова палата нашої області і станом на 21 рік платформа вже налічує 9 міст. Я прошу включити наступний слайд і більш про нашу діяльність ми з вами побачимо на наступному слайді. Будь ласка. 
Економіка всіх шахтарських міст, платформи, так чи інакше, залежить від діяльності шахт. І їх закриття в майбутньому приведе до серйозних негативних наслідків у багатьох сферах життєдіяльності громад. І щоб цього уникнути, потрібно вже зараз готувати справедливу трансформацію. Працювати над створенням робочих міст в альтернативних галузях економіки, навчати новим спеціальностям у навчальних закладах шахтарських міст, долати негативні екологічні наслідки від діяльності шахт. Всі наші міста стикаються з великими екологічними викликами, що пов'язані з видобутком та спалюванням вугілля. Насамперед, це забруднення повітря. Є цілі міста, житловий фонд, яких все ще опалюється вугіллям, що негативно впливає на якість повітря, особливо взимку. Ще один такий екологічний виклик – це наявність тариконів, деформація ґрунту через видобутну діяльність, поводження і шахтною водою. Я прошу перейти до наступного слайду. І задля подолання і пом'якшення деяких з цих проблем ми в платформі вже почали працювати над розробленням конкретних пропозицій. По-перше, у нас є, є проєкти з використання відновлюваних джерел енергії, а саме встановлення сонячних електростанцій на дагах, на дагах наших муніципальних будівель. Загалом ми маємо попередню технічну документацію для 19 станцій в 7, в 7 містах платформи. По-друге, ідея для повторного використання шахтної води. Ця проблема є болючою та актуальною для всіх міст. У нас розглядаються такі варіанти. Це використання шахтної води для теплової генерації через встановлення теплових насосів. І Друге, друга ідея така – це очищення та використання як технічної води аж до потенційної подачі в мережу водопостачання наших міст. Я прошу перейти до наступного слайду. І також я хочу наголосити на дуже важливому процесі, що зараз проходить і матиме великий вплив на подолання екологічних викликів. Останній рік підтримані трьома міжнародними проектами, що він фінансується німецьким урядом, USAID та Європейською комісією. Міста нашої платформи розробляють спільну стратегію справедливої трансформації. І фіналізація роботи планується наприкінці цього літа і вже є погоджені стратегічні цілі, серед яких є Досягнення генерації 50% електроенергії та 30% тепла з ВДЄ до 2030 року. Пошук альтернативних альтернатив для постачання для водопостачання в регіоні, включаючи повторне використання шахтної води. Ось такі головні ідеї, ось такі головні стратегічні плани. Я прошу перейти до наступного слайду. Крім того, я хочу подякувати і я, і мої колеги дуже вдячні за запрошення прийняти участь в сьогоднішній панелі та в роботі платформи для вугільних регіонів Західний Балкан та України взагалі. Ця ініціатива видається нам хорошим шансом обмінятися досвідом трансформації зі своїми європейськими колегами та поділитися своїми, своїм досвідом. Дуже дякую. Thank you very much, um, Mr. Bipel, for uh, sharing your uh, experience uh, from your municipality. I think that these are really the, the examples uh, that we need for uh, for four regions who are facing the challenges in the in the energy transition. And uh, now we will hear a few thoughts uh, from the from the side of the of the business, from energy business. So I would like to introduce um, uh, Mr. Irda, Ildar Salieyev, uh, who is also joining us uh, today from Ukraine. Mr. Salieyev is the is the CEO of uh, DTEC Energy. He also holds a degree in uh, mining engineering, so he's also 
uh, deeply involved uh, in the sector, uh, just because of his uh, studies, but also because of his professional career, which uh, is uh, overarching more than 17 years of experience in the energy, in the steel, and the machine building sectors uh, in Ukraine. Uh, he rejoined uh, DTEC in October 2020, after also other positions in different businesses, and he was appointed as general director of DTEC Energy in January 2021. So we would like to hear from you about the about the challenges and perhaps also the ideas from the business side uh, in, in the energy transition. Over to you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, I will tell a little bit about our experience, about experience of the tech in uh, uh, just transitions of whole regions or about uh, our steps, about our way. First of all, I want to tell that uh, DTEC uh, has been a party of the UN Global Compact since 2007. The company followed uh, the uh, sustainable development goals of the UN uh, Global Compact in its activities. As of today, DTEC is uh, undergoing a transformation to become a more environmentally friendly, efficient and high-tech business guided by the ESG principles in its activities. Uh, this is our contribution to building a new economy of Ukraine. Uh, we completely share the European goals uh, and acknowledge that decarbonization is an important condition, not only for successful transformation of our business, but also a key of success uh, and economic stability of Ukraine. Uh, the global goal of the tech is to become a carbon natural company by 2040. Uh, however, we are well aware that the replacement of carbon intensive electricity generation with low carbon one will have a significant impact on the economy and social environment of the region of operation of coal companies. The condition for the just transformation need to be created already now. Today, the coal industry sector of Ukraine employs approximately 100,000 people. This is about 60 monotown across the country, which are completely dependent uh, on the operations of coal companies. 60% of budget revenues comes uh, solely from the coal mining, which also contributes uh, to maintenance on the entire public sector of those towns. The coal companies operated by the DTEC Energy employee, uh, one fourth of the workers engaged in the coal mine sector of Ukraine. This is more than 22,000 miners in Donetsk and Dnipropetrovsk regions. Uh, it's three big mono cities are located in those areas with population more than uh, 80,000 people. Where miners, uh, where mines are the key source of jobs and local uh, budget revenues. This year, our company ceased coal production at two mines in Western Donbas, uh, the Blagodatna and Stashkova mines. Uh, currently, they are under the process of closure, but the Tech Energy has already provided approximately 1,000 people who worked at those mines with jobs at other DTEX companies. Uh, furthermore, jobs will also be granted it for those workers who will be released um, after the final closure. We aim to arrange the process of mine closure uh, in the most civil and correct manner. As a responsible employee and social responsible business, our task is to assist to the local authorities in developing a roadmap for just transition process, which will guarantee the viability of those regions. We undertook a commitment uh, to facilitate the transition of coal regions at the local, national and international levels. We have been engaged in that since 2018. Supported by the tech energy, it, uh, town of Dobropilia became uh, the first coal region of Ukraine to uh, follow uh, the path of economic diversification. It has developed and approved the program for economic diversification of the Brapilia community in the context of green transition. 
This program covers three years and uh, contain more than 40 projects uh, on creation of new jobs in various economy sectors from construction to uh, service rendering. Now, with support of Detec Energy, three other coal mine communities in Dnipropetrovsk region with a population more than 50,000 people are following similar paths to develop their just transition programs, namely uh, Pershatravinska, Mikolaevska, and Petropavlovska communities. In each of these communities, a working group uh, have been set up to develop a detailed action plan aiming to create new jobs and to design solutions that will help reduce uh, the energy dependence of these communities on coal. The working groups include representatives of local authorities, trade unions, businesses, experts, and public organizations. About uh, 400 projects based on German and Polish experience of transition have been analyzed. This resulted in, se uh, in selection of most suitable of them for adaptation in these communities. To date, as a result, the working group have prepared uh, investment passport for each of these three communities and profiles of the communities, which include the estimated resources potential. They are currently developing the project on creation of new value chain, utilization of industrial weight, uh, substitution of coal in thermal boiler house with renewable energy sources, uh, sub-regional partnership with cover project that uh, uh, enhance the economic potential of the communities. Uh, now the work is underway to develop the investment projects and uh, an online resource that will provide uh, comprehensive information for investors and donors about their, their, uh, these territories and potential areas of cooperation in uh, easy to use format. Uh, I would like to emphasize that uh, these transitions programs are being developed uh, uh, primarily at the local level, where people understand the uh, specificity of the natural resources, the structure of the economy, in order to define the possibility of creating new jobs. However, for the implementation, it is important to ensure support at all levels, uh, regional, national and international levels. The tech is ready to provide expertise and resource to lay down foundation for just transition, but it is vitally important to develop a regulatory framework and mechanism at the national level to ensure the just transition. That's all. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Salieya, for your intervention and to uh, provide us with, uh, with your viewpoints uh, from, from the business sector side. It was especially encouraging uh, to hear that you, as a as a business, very much uh, active and invested into the coal infrastructure. You have your own uh, carbon neutrality target, which is also underpinned by a concrete date. And it was also particularly encouraging for me to hear that you already have ongoing projects about uh, the reallocation of workforce within the company, uh, because as we all know, uh, and as we uh, all have experienced in different uh, countries and in particular EU member states, uh, unemployment and the, um, um, the basically reinventing the jobs that uh, mines were producing in the past, that is a, quite a big of a challenge. And that brings us very nicely uh, to our last panelist, who is Mr. Miroslav Skipski from Poland. Uh, Poland being, uh, well, one of the, if not the, uh, EU member state, which is the most concerned uh, by the issue of core regions in transition. Uh, Mr. Skipski is the director of the Katowice branch of ARP. His background is in economics, but he has been involved in the coal industry for almost 25 years. So he has um, yeah, like a quarter of a century of experience in this sector. Uh, he was for 10 years working at the state agency for mining and development. Afterwards, he became manager of the Industrial Development Agency. And uh, just to give also an example uh, how his personal experience relates to our discussion today, he also was involved in development 
of the concept of a support system for granting and financing social protection in the mining industry, which I think just provides provides us the perfect case uh, for uh, a concluding uh, presentation of this panel. So, Mr. Skipsky, welcome and the floor is yours. Dzień dobry Państwu. Na wstępie chciałem powiedzieć, że zastępuję Pana Dyrektora Skipskiego na spotkaniu. Nazywam się Tadeusz Pogonowski i jestem zastępcą Pana Dyrektora. Chciałem na wstępie w sposób dość taki syntetyczny, krótki odnieść się do doświadczeń związanych z restrukturyzacją sektora górnictwa węgla kamiennego w Polsce która na przestrzeni dziesięcioleci ma miejsce i de facto no, jest stałym elementem zmian gospodarczych zarówno w regionie, jak i w kraju. W tym momencie warto powiedzieć, że początek lat 90., kiedy ta transformacja zaczynała swój powiedzmy szybszy bieg, doszło do znaczących zmian związanych z kwestiami zmiany ustroju. Tak jak z końcem lat 70. wydobycie w górnictwie węgla kamiennego, bo o tym bym chciał się generalnie, na tym bym się chciał skupić, wynosiło 200 milionów ton, tak obecnie wynosi niewiele ponad 50, a więc doszło do redukcji znaczącej wydobycia. Za tym bezpośrednio doszło do redukcji zatrudnienia. Z ponad 400 tysięcy osób zatrudnionych bezpośrednio w kopalniach węgla kamiennego, obecnie zatrudnienie wynosi niewiele ponad 80 tysięcy, co, co powoduje, że skala tych zmian jest bardzo dynamiczna i można powiedzieć, że ma no, znaczący wpływ na nasz krajobraz, zarówno regionalny, jak i krajowy. Co jest ważne, Mówiąc o transformacji, trzeba patrzeć na ten temat w sposób holistyczny, czyli trzeba adresować nasze propozycje działań, kierunki wyznaczanych projektów, odnosząc się do ogółu osób znajdujących się w otoczeniu górnictwa. Tu warto powiedzieć, że to otoczenie według różnych szacunków, bo jest to forma, bym powiedział, nie do określona, wynosi do pół miliona osób zatrudnionych w branżach tak zwanych okołogórniczych. Więc jak widzimy, skala jest tych zmian bardzo duża. Warto powiedzieć, to co jakby do, z naszego doświadczenia widzimy, obecne działania wprost restrukturyzacyjne realizowane są w wyznaczonym podmiocie, to jest spółce restrukturyzacji kopań, która na mocy pomocy, udzielanej pomocy publicznej prowadzi de facto i likwidację, jak i zagospodarowanie majątku kopań węgla kamiennego na Śląsku i stąd też nasz tutaj udział. Wspieramy ten proces udzielania pomocy publicznej pod względem opiniowania weryfikacji planów i też stąd udział Narodowego Funduszu Ochrony Środowiska i Gospodarki Wodnej, który również wspiera spółkę restrukturyzacji kopań w tych działaniach, w szczególności w zakresie działań o charakterze proekologicznym i działań z, z ukierunkowanych na rekultywację terenów zdegradowanych. Warto powiedzieć o jednej istotnej kwestii, która miała miejsce w ostatnich miesiącach, a więc podpisaniu umowy społecznej, która w sposób jednoznaczny określiła horyzont czasowy zmiany, znaczy horyzont czasowy zmian związanych z górnictwem, a więc jego de facto likwidacji do roku 2049. Zostało to porozumienie osiągnięte przy bezpośrednim współudziale strony społecznej w formie związków zawodowych, co jest dużego, dużym osiągnięciem, że takie porozumienie zostało wypracowane. Na mocy tego porozumienia zostały określone działania bezpośrednio związane z planami likwidacji każdej z kopań, gdzie określono jej dla każdej horyzont czasowy jak i działaniami o charakterze osłonowym związanymi zarówno z 
restrukturyzacją zatrudnienia, jak i wspieraniem działań firm otoczenia górnictwa. Bardzo bym chciał skrótowo się odnosić, ponieważ problem jest na tyle złożony, że no bardzo, bardzo trudno jakby kwintesencję tego problemu zaadresować do Państwa w sposób konkretny, skonkretyzowany. W każdym razie należy sobie zdać sprawę, że to, co jest na Górnym Śląsku, odnosząc się do kopań węgla kamiennego, nie odnoszę się tu do regionów węgla brunatnego, które też mamy w kraju, jest jednym z najbardziej pod względem ekologicznym przekształconych negatywnie terenów, chyba w Europie praktycznie. Tutaj ilość odpadów zgromadzonych, powęglowych z przeróbki kopalin jest no, niestalne, niespotykaną skalę. Tak więc wyzwania tak z, zarówno dla przedsiębiorców górniczych, jak i dla otoczenia, czyli dla społeczności lokalnej są bardzo duże i wymagają znaczącego zaangażowania ze strony państwa, która została wyrażona właśnie w podpisanej umowie społecznej które jakby w swoim założeniu zapewnia sprawiedliwą transformację. Thank you, thank you very much, Matej, for uh, for jumping in uh, uh, to replace uh, Mr. Skipski today. Uh, there is a question. Uh, there is a question coming uh, from the floor addressed to you. Um, and it is about the Turov uh, mines case, I and mean, we have probably all read about it uh, in the news about the, um, the recent uh, court case and discussion. And the question is how this has affected the perception of coal mining in Poland. Uh, so if you can just share a few thoughts in, let's say, uh, one minute or one and a half minutes, please. Oczywiście. Bezpośrednio nasza firma, czyli Agencja Rozwoju Przemysłu nie pośredniczy w tych działaniach związanych z elektrownią Turów, jak i całym, nazwijmy to, aspektem wydobycia węgla brunatnego. Jakkolwiek należy zauważyć, że rozstrzygnięcie sporów o, nazwijmy to, granicznych związanych z oddziaływaniem eksploatacji węgla szeroko pojętego w tym przypadku brunatnego ma kluczowy charakter dla powodzenia wszelkich działań związanych ze sprawiedliwą transformacją docelowo w jakimkolwiek określonym horyzoncie czasowym. Tak więc dla nas osobiście jest to temat bardzo ważny, który należy rozwiązać w sposób sprawiedliwy ze względu na wagę oddziaływania kopalń i znaczące ich oddziaływanie na środowisko, szczególnie się w rejonie Worka Turoszowskiego. Thank you very much. Uh, and I would also like to thank to all uh, the panelists for uh, keeping to the to the time uh, agree, uh, time arrangements. Um, and I just wanted to uh, add uh, another um, issue to the, to the discussion. I mean, the title of the panel is Voices from the Core Regions on Environmental Slash Repurposing uh, Challenges. I think we have spoken or we have heard quite a lot about uh, repurposing and about just transition. But then the environmental um, issues are also there. We have also heard uh, from speakers of the previous panel about the major uh, air quality issues that, uh, well, not the mining of uh, coal, uh, to some extent also the mining, but more the use, the, the burning of coal represents uh, to, these, to these communities. The issue of uh, air quality and air pollution is well known, uh, I think, probably to everybody who is tuning in to this uh, discussion today, especially in the Western Balkans, we have seen the pre-COVID uh, protests basically regularly occurring uh, every winter. Also, uh, in, in our activities in the energy community, we are doing uh, quite, quite a lot of work on that, implementation of the large combustion plants directive, 
We are also about to launch a so-called Clean Air Regions initiative, uh, which is uh, also going to be addressing uh, communities at municipal level. And maybe um, just for a quick reflection from Mr. Salieya, if we can uh, have on the on the air quality dimension from the business uh, perspective. We all know that this requires investments from operators. Uh, but we also all know that uh, these investments, uh, they are at, at the level of society, they are coming back uh, at uh, benefits which far exceed the, the investments needed. So, Mr. Samir, the floor is yours. So, talking about environmental, uh, we make uh, quite uh, big investment projects for reducing our negative influence on environmental. Uh, for example, uh, for example, only uh, in Ukraine we have uh, 23 uh, retrofitted generation units, and 21 of them it's uh, detect energies uh, TPPs. Uh, so, mostly, uh, according to these uh, investments, according to these projects, we uh, reduced uh, our uh, and pollution emission and our uh, dust emission. For example, we reduced our pollution emissions uh, in the past eight years by the uh, 58 uh, percent, uh, and uh, if we're talking about dust emissions, it's uh, about 70 percent. Uh, only, only in the last few years. Thank you very much uh, for these reflections. Um, anybody else from the panelists uh, who uh, would like to to reflect on this uh, aspect? Just for logistical information, we have uh, two more minutes, so to say. I'm looking at the panelists, but nobody seems to, to indicate an interest to speak. Um, so if that is the case, then I would just like to, to wrap up um, uh, and thank uh, all, the, all the contributors to this, to this second panel uh, at today's event, Voices from the Core Regions on Environmental slash Repurposing Challenges. I think we have heard a lot of um, valuable and interesting contributions from um, from municipal level, from from country level, and also uh, from from the side of the business, uh, I think it admitted uh, admittedly uh, this is this is a, a rather major challenge that affects um, not only the municipalities concerned, but also uh, at state level and budget level. Um, basically, the, um, it concerns everybody, and of course, also it has a lot of uh, societal aspects. So. Once again, thank you very much uh, for participating at uh, this afternoon's discussion. And I pass the floor back to LOD uh, for the uh, introduction of the next panel. Thank you very much once again.